I have a feeling that today's show is going to be all about the new MoFi Source Point 8 stand mount speaker. Now, of course, it's the little brother to the Source Point 10 that came out uh, last year, and I reviewed it here on the channel in November. Both speakers are designed by the legend, the man himself, Andrew Jones. And Andrew has a thing about concentric drivers, but he's never designed one, or in this case two, that are this big. So the Source Point 10 had a 10 inch concentric driver, and this one has an 8 inch concentric driver. And they share a lot the same tweeter, the same motor structure, everything except the diameter of the mid woofer part of it. And the cabinets look almost identical. Well, they are identical except in size. This is a scaled down 10. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a 10 here to directly compare, but I will say, I'll tip my hat early in this uh, review and say, I really like this speaker and I think I actually like this one more than I did the 10. I like the 10, but this one I just got into a lot faster. It was just an easier entry for me. Now, by the way, the, the speaker is available in three finishes. The one I have here, my sample is walnut, but it is also available in black and also white. And now, unlike last time, there is the matching stand, which comes in black or white. It's a steel stand. <laughs> Say that three times fast, steel stand. Anyway, it's a very sturdy stand. I, I don't think it's a particularly attractive stand. I don't know. I just. I want it to be prettier. I want because the speaker itself is kind of cool with the faceted front baffle, and this one is just so straight and you know manly or something. But in any case, it works. It's a very sturdy stand. As for the price, for all three finishes, it is two thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars a pair, and that includes the stands. But if you choose to get the speaker without stands, it is then two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars a pair. Let's take a peek at the specifications, and the one that I looked at first was impedance. Happy to see this is an 8 ohm speaker, meaning it's a very easy speaker to drive even though its sensitivity is not particularly high. Now that's actually one of the key differences between the Source Point 8 and the Source Point 10. The Source Point 10 is 4 dB more sensitive, meaning it'll play louder with a given amount of power. So. If that's important to you, that's a reason to go for the Source Point 10. And the Source Point 10's base dips a little bit deeper than the Source Point 8. Here's a cutaway view of the inside of the speaker, the construction of the speaker. You'll see the bracing. And at this point, I will be pleased to announce, yes, there will be an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. And over the course of this review, I'm going to compare the Source Point 8 with three different speakers. The Kef LS50, of course, the Buchart S400 Mark II, and also, this is where it gets interesting, the ELAC Unify Reference designed by Andrew Jones. Now that's a smaller, less expensive speaker, but it was I had to put it in there since they're both designed by the same man. I forgot to mention that the speaker is ported. Here you go, here's a picture, and it has a very nice set of binding posts. And as for setup, like most speakers of any real quality, they need to be put out into the room a bit. You know, basically the more the better. But over at the smaller end of this room, I had them 18 inches away from the wall behind them to the back of the speaker and with a slight degree of towing. Now these speakers are very fussy about towing because if you're too much on axis with the tweeter, it can be a tad bright. So you can sort of, let's say, season to taste by playing with the toe-in. And uh, that's it. Now, as for the amplifiers, I used a few. I used the Schitt Vidar 2 power amp, and I used the Belcanto Reference 500, which is a Class D amp that I have that I like. And that's about it. Yeah, I think those are the only two amps. Oh, and also a First Watt SIT3. As for music, um, I played this recording by Anna Van Hasshoof that I have talked about before because it's such a great recording. She plays basically a church organ on some of the tracks, and it is an incredible recording because you feel 
not just that it makes bass, but just the air moving through the pipes of the organ, that kind of texture, that kind of detail, that kind of probably you want to reach out and touch the sound. And I got to say, the SP8, the Source Point 8, was doing an amazing job uh, delineating all that information. It was just right there. And these speakers really do image. They throw a big image that has a nice sense of focus and detail. But also, this is a pretty, for more or less a pop record, it's a pretty dynamic recording, and this speaker definitely could keep up with the dynamics. For the next step, yes, I did want to compare, I was eager to compare the ELAC Unify Reference with this speaker, with the Source Point 8, and I played uh, Arcade Fire's Neon Bible. Whoa, this is an intense recording. It also has deep bass, amazing stuff and textures and details running through that recording. And I was playing it medium-ish loud, meaning in the high 70 dB range. And I gotta say, it was apparent right away that the ELAC speaker could not keep up. It definitely sounded more strained, more pushed than the same music over the Source Point 8. The Source Point 8 sounded like a bigger speaker because it is a bigger speaker. It just had more, let's say, confidence in the sound. And the vocals and the percussion, it just opened up more. And, you know, it's almost like uh, the ELAC Unify reference diminished the sound of that recording. It just took everything down, which is a big surprise to me because I really like the Unify reference, but it met its match with the Source Point 8. So there you go, Andrew. <laughs> you, you did good. You definitely did good. So next up was this box set, this two CD box set of James Brown instrumentals. And you know what? I don't think this is nearly all of his instrumentals. But in any case, it's great music. It moves. It has this energy. And he's playing Hammond organ, I think, on a lot of tracks. And it's the brass and just the energy of the music gets released into the room over the Source Point 8. And again, the ELAC Unify reference just was, it sounded like it was constricted. It was holding back. It just didn't have that life to it. That the Source Point 8 did so well. The next one in the queue was the KEF LS50 Meta, which has also a concentric driver. But this one is a five and a quarter inch driver in a much smaller cabinet than the Source Point 8. And I was playing Stevie Wonder's amazing record, Songs in the Key of Life. <laughs> wow. And, you know, it's such a fun record. And uh, yes, sorry, it's the same story again, that the Source Point 8 just had more va-va-voom to the sound. So, you know, when I, when I turn down the volume to, you know, sort of medium levels, the, the comparison was easier. I really felt that the Kef LS50 Meta held its own. It wasn't totally embarrassed when you weren't like trying to push to see how much I could get out of these speakers. Then, yeah, the LS50 is an amazingly transparent speaker, great imaging speaker. I love that speaker. And here's the thing, it's uh, $1,600 a pair. If you paired the LS50 with the matching sub or the, the appropriate sub from CAF, the KC62, yeah. Well, that would be more than a match, and it would be about the same price as the Source Point 8. So there's an, there are options there. But in terms of this comparison, just speaker to speaker, yeah, it's no, there's no question that overall the Source Point 8 is the better speaker. It just, you know what? It just sounds like a bigger speaker. And bigger is important when you are playing it loud. If you're the kind of person doesn't really play loud pretty much ever, then going for smaller speakers makes sense. But if you do like to hit it and have parties and you just like to play music loud, you should probably move towards bigger speakers rather than using small speakers with subwoofers. I mean, whatever works for you, but I think size definitely matters when it comes to bass extension, bass clarity, dynamics, power delivery. Yeah, bigger is better. Up to this point, I was playing the SP8s, the Source Point 8s, at the small end of the room over here, and where they were 18 inches away from the wall. And then I moved them over here, where there's a lot more space and no sidewalls to speak of. 
and I put them three feet away from, or three and a half feet away from the wall behind them, actually those records and books, and man, oh man, this sound just opened up. And when I stepped to better electronics, the uh, LTA 40 Zonal Amplifier, wow, they just, they sound like way better speakers in terms of their transparency and clarity and openness and the way they just open up, meaning they get out of the way of the music. They, you're not thinking about the sound coming from boxes. You just have a big immersive sound feel and it's freaking great. And by the way, Centerfill, I don't mention that often enough, was really rock solid. To finish up, at the other end of the room, at the small end of the room, I was using the Buckhart S400 Mark II stand mount speakers. Now, these are also small speakers, but they have one thing that the other two didn't have, the ELAC and the CAF. They have this one, the Buckhart, has a large passive radiator on its back, and that radiator produces a significant amount of bass. <laughs> so even though it's a small speaker, it makes more bass. And I was thinking maybe this could challenge the source point eight. And the answer is no, <laughs> it did not. It was, it was a very uh, lively sound. It was like it had more kick to it than the other speakers, than the ELAC and the KEF, like greater mid-range dynamics and stuff like that. But in terms of bottom end push and power, no, the nod still goes to the source point eight. Now it's time to bring it home with, <laughs> so Steve, what do you really think of the MoFi source point eight? You know, I think I like this speaker more than the source point 10 that I had here in house in November of last year. I wish I could have compared them directly, but that never came, that wasn't part of the deal here. And I don't know, I just put it this way, in terms of how I feel about the speaker, I enjoyed my time with this speaker more than the Source Point 10. It did. And that's, a, that's one way of putting it. But here's the thing. For a stand mount speaker, it's still, I don't know, it's, it feels expensive at $3,000 a pair, including the stand. Now, if that's pushing it for you, one of the speakers that would make for an obvious uh, alternative uh, course here would be the Wharfdale Linton. Yeah, and that one, including the stands, I think I checked, is $1,700 a pair. And by the way, those stands, the Linton stands, are way nicer than these for the uh, Source Point 10. I really don't like these stands. I think they're kind of ugly. I think they really detract from the look of the Source Point 8. So anyway, but anyway, so I think the Linton, the Wharfdale Linton, would be an obvious alternative course for you people that can't quite swing uh, $3,000 a pair. I, I did not compare them, but I remember having very good feelings about the Wharfdale Linton when I reviewed it way back when. Speaking of uh, a recommendable, uh, how about this? The Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hey, this one comes to us from Daniela in Milano, Italy. In the Hi-Fi system, there's a Technics SL1200 Mark V with a Mr. 1200 rewired arm, RCA socket, external power supply, plus an Ordofon RS309D 12 inch tone arm on an Acoustastand plinth. The cartridge, actually there's two here, uh, an Ordofon SPU number one E and a Nagaoka MP110. Step up transformer, auditorium 23. The moving magnet phono preamp is a Fez Audio Gaia Mini. CD player, Techniques SLP1200. The streamer is a Premier NP5 Prisma. The DAC is an audio exclusive PO.8. Cassette, Braun C301M. Preamp, Shindo Mazaris. Model 454, power amp, deckware, Zen, triode, and on the bench, an amp camp amp, and also a Rysung A10. Those are power amplifiers. The big speakers are an Altec Horn Anken system. The TV system consists of the preamp, starting with the preamp, a Rotel RC972. The DAC is a Rotel RDP980. CD player, Rotel. RDD980 
power amps, Morotel and RMB100. Those are mono blocks, and the speakers are JBL4530 and JBL2426. The DJ console, we're finishing up now, is a Technics SL1200 Mark II turntable, Technics SLDZ1200, that's a CD player, and an Allen and Heath X123 mixer. Thank you, Daniela. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the audiophiliac, and I am the genuine article. But I say that because there's a scammer out there who's cheating people, my viewers and even manufacturers, saying that they're me. And that's total BS. So if the fake Steve Guttenberg is asking you for money to pay for shipping for something I reviewed. Don't do it. That's total BS. And same for manufacturers. Uh, I have a way of reaching out to you guys that's pretty personal. Anyway, uh, beyond that, yeah, if you dig the show, please consider joining my Patreon. And by the way, uh, before I get to the Patreon part, Herb is really popular, and I now have a Herb playlist where I put all of his appearances on this playlist. So if you're jonesing for the next uh, Herb episode, they're all there. I think there's 16 or 17 shows with Herb. So check that out. Um, but yeah, as for the Patreon, please consider joining and help to support this channel. This is the best way to do it. You can join for a couple of bucks a month, up to $100 a month. Uh, all the information is on the Patreon website. You can join for a month or two and split, and you can join and stay for years, and a couple of people have done that. And uh, what else? Well, please like the episode if you like it. Hit, give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel if you have yet to do so. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really, really, really do hope to see you back here again in just a couple of days. See, I didn't say, yeah. Anyway, thank you again. Bye-bye.